Welcome to Daily Scripture and Meditation with Shirley Celis Jackson. We begin, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thursday, the 23rd of December, 2021, of the fourth week of Advent, we honor St. John of Canty. Laudate, our daily prayer. Lord Jesus, you are gracious and forgiving towards us. Renew in me the gift of faith that I may believe your promises and obey your word. Amen. Magnificat, daily scripture, but first, an overview. By the mercy of God, the great and terrible day of the Lord's arrival will be the answer to all our prayers. Suddenly, there will come the Lord whom you seek. Just as Zachariah's obedience finally freed his tongue to speak and bless God, the Lord's refining fire of grace purifies us and turns our hearts back to Him who is our Father. I will send you Elijah the prophet before the day of the Lord comes. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi, chapter 3, verse 1. Thus says the Lord God, Lo, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and suddenly there will come to the temple the Lord whom you seek, and the messenger of the covenant whom you desire. Yes. He is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who will endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like the refiner's fire, or like the fuller's lie. He will sit refining and purifying silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi, refining them like gold or like silver, that they may offer due sacrifice to the Lord. Then the sacrifice of Judah and Jerusalem will please the Lord as in the days of old, as in years gone by. Lo, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the day of the Lord comes, the great and terrible day, to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with doom. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 25 Responsorial Lift up your heads and see, your redemption is near at hand. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me, teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior. Good and upright is the Lord, thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are kindness and constancy towards those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The friendship of the Lord is with those who fear him and his covenant for their instruction. Lift up your heads and see your redemption is near at hand. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. O King of all nations and keystone of the Church, come and save man whom you formed from the dust. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Birth of John the Baptist A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 1 
verse 57. When the time arrived for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy toward her, and they rejoiced with her. When they came on the eighth day to circumcise the child, they were going to call him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said in reply, No, he will be called John. But they answered her, There is no one among your relatives who has this name. So they made signs what he wished him to be called. He asked for a tablet and wrote, John is his name, and all were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened, his tongue freed, and he spoke blessing God. Then fear came upon all their neighbors, and all these matters were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. All who heard these things took them to heart, saying, What then will this child be? For surely the hand of the Lord was with him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Magnificat Meditation of the Day is entitled Rejoicing at the Lord's Great Mercy Say to those who are fearful of heart Be strong, fear not Behold, your God will come and save you Isaiah 35, 4 It becomes more urgent as Christmas approaches Enriched with the exhortation to prepare our hearts To welcome the Messiah the one awaited by the people will certainly come, and his salvation will be for all. On the holy night, we will again recall his birth in Bethlehem. In a certain sense, we will relive the feelings of the shepherds, their joy and their wonder. With Mary and Joseph, we will contemplate the glory of the Word made flesh for our redemption. We will pray that all men may accept the new life that the Son of Man brought into the world. The Liturgy of Advent, filled with constant allusions to the joyful expectation of the Messiah, helps us to understand the fullness of the value and meaning of the mystery of Christmas. It is not just about commemorating the historical event which occurred some 2,000 years ago in a little village of Judea, Instead, we must understand that our whole life should be an advent in vigilant expectation of Christ's final coming. To prepare our hearts to welcome the Lord who will come one day to judge the living and the dead, we must learn to recognize His presence in the events of daily life. Advent is then a period of intense training that directs us decisively to the one who has already come, who will come, and who continuously comes. With these sentiments, the Church prepares to contemplate in ecstasy the mystery of the Incarnation. The Gospel recounts the conception and birth of Jesus, the reports, the many providential circumstances that preceded and surrounded such a miraculous event, the angel's annunciation to Mary, the birth of John the Baptist, the choir of angels in Bethlehem, the arrival of the Magi from the East, Saint Joseph's visions, there is John the Baptist, the precursor of the Messiah, who is presented as a voice crying in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. It is the only condition for recognizing the Messiah. Finally, Mary, the woman of the yes, who contrary to Eve, makes the plan of God her own without reservation. Thus, 
she becomes a clear light for our steps and the highest model for our inspiration. This meditation was written by St. John Paul II, who died in 2005 and reigned as Pope from 1978 until 2005. Laudate Reflections and Actionable Challenges from our scriptural readings. Introductory Prayer Lord, as I humbly kneel before you in prayer, I recognize your power and glory. Without you, I am nothing, but with you I can do all things. With this trust, I implore you to help me make good use of this time of prayer as an expression of my deep desire to love and imitate you. I am here to please and glorify you. Amen. Our petition for the next three challenging opportunities helping advance God's kingdom on earth. Lord, help me to appreciate more deeply the role of parents and families as domestic churches. Our first opportunity, Amazing Grace. Elizabeth and Zachariah receive the great grace of a child in their old age. And not just any child, he was John the Baptist. To ready him for his great vocation, he would need the love and guidance that are unique to parents. Great people often trace their path from the love of a mom or dad, frequently both, who might remain hidden from the world. Am I grateful to my parents for what I receive from them? Am I regularly seeking what is truly best for my spouse and children, and not just what seems best in the eyes of the world? Our second opportunity, God's Call. The child would not be named after his father, but rather would receive the name God chose. The great tension in the life of a child, and sometimes an adult, is the close identity they have with a parent, or with a parent's plans for their life. In truth, our identity rests in our Heavenly Father. God alone gives us meaning and a vocation in life. Could there be expectations of a parent or other family member that hold me back from God's plan for me? Or, if I am a parent, do I unjustly impose my plans on my children? Do I interfere with their vocation in their marriage? Our third opportunity, Zachariah's Yes. Zachariah's voice returned only after he acquiesced to God's plan and agrees to the child's name. When we finally say yes to God in our life, that's when we find the deepest meaning of our lives. That's when we express ourselves the best. Am I keeping God waiting? Our Conversation with Christ Lord, Zechariah took a long and winding road on his path over nine months. Let me see my own life as a path and have patience with those who are still on their path. Our Resolution Today, I'll say yes to one thing that God has been asking of me. Further Reflection Entitled, Ready or Not, Here I Come Quote, Who will endure the day of His coming, and who can stand when He appears? Unquote. Malachi 3.2 Almost everyone believes in preparing for Christmas, but are we preparing the way of the Lord? 
Luke 3, 4, or the way of the world. The Lord calls us to make gigantic changes in our ways. Priorities as big as mountains in our lives should be leveled. Our valleys, depressions, pits, and ruts are also to be leveled. As crooked as our hearts are, Jeremiah 17.9 Jesus wants them straightened. As rough as our edges are, they must be smoothed. The Lord is not calling us to maintain, much less to promote, the status quo of a world trapped in sin. The Lord is calling us to a revolution where the high and the mighty are disposed from their thrones and the lowly raised to high places. Luke 1 51. That's what I mean by preparing the way for the Lord. Are you prepared for Christmas by Christ's standards? Mary, Joseph, Elizabeth, Zechariah, John, and Jesus all went through these big changes near the time of Jesus' birth. Are you prepared to do the same? Will you receive the real Christmas? Will you receive Christ? Our Prayer Jesus, it is a fearful thing to fall into your hands. Hebrew 10.31 This Christmas, let it be done to me as you say. Luke 1.38 God's Promise to Us this astonished them all. At that moment his mouth was opened and his tongue loosed, and he began to speak in praise of God. Luke 1, 63 Thomas A. Kempis quote from The Imitation of Christ The Lord bestoweth his benediction where he findeth vessels empty. And the more perfectly one forsaketh the things below, and the more he dies to himself, the more speedily grace cometh, entereth in more plentifully, and the higher it elevateth a heart that is free. We are God's hands, feet, and voice. May his peace rest upon you as you go and announce the gospel of the Lord in your words and deeds. Thank you for joining today. Abundant blessings upon you and yours. Amen. We close as always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.